Brought to you by Stephen John's at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, located on the I-35 South Service Road, just south of 3009. Eat better, feel better. By David Flatman at Cat5 Graphics, your t-shirt shop. Located on FM 1518 in shirts. Call 210-659-9430 for all your custom screen and embroidery printing needs. And by Greg Sherman Videography and Bowtie Productions of Texas. Call 419-902-3353 for all your videography needs in San Antonio and the Texas Hill Country. Hi, I'm Greg Sherman. Clemens High School has had a lot of success getting to the state semifinals in different sports over the years. The football team has been to the state semifinals multiple times in program history, and the boys basketball team went to the state final four just a handful of years ago, earlier in the decade. Volleyball had never been to the state semifinals. In fact, they had never made it out of the second round. Not because they weren't good, but because 6A volleyball is extremely stacked. Reagan. O'Connor, Johnson, Churchill, New Braunfels, Canyon, and Clark, among others, have been to the state semis over the years. Clemens, though, finally broke through, got past their second round hump, and made it all the way to Garland in 2019. And with a great team coming back in 2020, this may be the start of a new dynasty. The road to the state semifinals is a long one, littered with obstacles traffic and pressure. The travel is anything but smooth. Of course, having fans line the streets as you head on the final road trip of the year can make the long drive more pleasurable. It was amazing getting to see all the little kids. I actually coach a little club team, so all of my club players were there and they made posters for us and I got to take pictures with all of them and hug all of them. The amount of support we got from our community and from all of these schools was insane and I loved being able to go see all of them and they were so cute when we were getting off. It was really special to all of us because we had all gone to school at those feeder schools and a lot of us had teachers or family that were still there. Getting to see all of them and when we stopped at Jordan Intermediate School where I went I got to see a bunch of girls that knew who I was and I got to take pictures with them and they were just so sweet. Seeing all those kids out there like looking up to us really was like oh my gosh we're doing something great that really hasn't happened so much in our little city. The district champs won more matches than any previous Buffalo team had in the program's 60 year history. The journey to Garland was years in the making, starting long before the bus trip with previous experiences of playoff disappointment and emptiness before Clemens was finally able to extinguish old ghosts and blaze a new trail. Clemens Volleyball had never won a district title in school history before 2018, but won their first that year and successfully defended in 2019 with a perfect record in District 26-6A. I didn't really expect us to come out as strong as we did. We had lost some key players from last year, but when we came out and we competed like we did last year at Pearland, I was like, okay, we can actually do this. Like, we're really good. So. We, we're going to go far this year. I, I felt it then. Other than a five-set marathon win over New Braunfels Canyon, the Buffaloes were in control of every match from start to finish. While they realistically clinched the district title after that Canyon win, they didn't mathematically clinch it until their next-to-last match against New Braunfels High, a team with state championship winning history. It was unfamiliar position for them because they had never made it out of the second round of the tournament. They thought it would happen last year when they faced San Antonio O'Connor in the round of 64, but the Buffs were unable to garner momentum and were swept by the Panthers, who would reach the state semifinals for the second straight year. Looking back at the history and knowing that Clemens as a volleyball program has evolved so quickly and being knocked out by O'Connor last year, it, it hurt pretty bad. And seeing O'Connor go to state and knowing that all we had to do was win that game and we could have had that opportunity, I think that fueled us this year coming back. After ousting Buda Hayes in round one, they faced the Reagan Rattlers, a team that had had postseason success against the Buffs, including sweeping them out in 2017. I think it got in our heads a little bit that this was the second round and this is, this is where we had lost last year and no team had gone past this round. So I think that 
maybe intimidated us a little bit. And I think the name Reagan intimidated, intimidated us a little bit. For an hour, that intimidation continued as the Rattlers took the first two sets, 19 and 20, and had control of the tempo, speed, and the match. First two sets, it was just like a flashback to O'Connor. And in my mind, I was saying, there's no way I'm doing that again. Like, I know how I felt then, and I'm not going to feel that way now. Reagan's side out percentage and their scoring efficiency was crazy in the first two sets, and that's key to winning. We understood that we had decided on the first ball, we had to be more efficient, and we just had to play better. It appeared they were on their way towards getting back on top of the region, and the Buffs looked to be heading to the exits prior to the second week of the tournament once again. Prior to 2003, volleyball matches were best two out of three, but the UIL changed the match length that year to a best of five. San Antonio Clark won a title that year thanks to the new rule. Most of the Clemens players had experience in coming back from 0-2 to win, including in 2018 versus SC UC ISD friend and colleague Cibolo Steele, their first such comeback in seven years. The third set began to see a change in play. It was a little scary, not going to lie. Our assistant coach pulled the senior, starting seniors aside, and I think that pep talk really just made us remember like what us four were here to do and our, our leadership roles and what it meant to this team. Buffs took sets three and four, 17 and 22, which set up a fifth set showdown sprint. We did change things up for the fifth set to put uh, our most powerful lineup in first and then going around to focus on attacking quickly and gaining that quick lead so we would have the lead at the half of the set or at eight points so we can immediately put our foot on the gas and get towards that win. There was no way we were going to lay down and die. That's something Clemens does not do. The Rattlers' dominance over the first hour of the contest was long spent. Clemens slammed on the accelerator to run Reagan out of the gym. The Buffaloes raced out to a 12-4 lead. A Rattlers service error gave Clemens seven match point opportunities. They only needed one a 17-second rally. The match didn't end by a power kill or a block, but instead an inconspicuous tip by Reagan at the net. The official signal tip late, and that was it. We had the momentum in the third and fourth set, and then when we went to the fifth set, we were like, okay, we have all of this momentum. We need to come out strong. And those first couple points when we were putting balls down, getting blocks, getting great digs, that's when we knew, like, okay, we got the first couple points, so we just get to keep pushing. Once it got to those last five or six points, everyone was like, oh, my God, we're going to do it. And it was that crazy feeling on the court of standing in the middle back and watching my teammates just absolutely kill it. It was so awesome. And to watch everyone get so excited. And, I mean, I was crying after the Reagan game because we'd never done that before, and it was – it was a goal, and to finally reach that was amazing. After so many frustrating second-round losses over the years, Shirts Clemens had finally broken through their Waterloo moment to advance to the second week of the tournament. In the third set, I didn't, I didn't think we could do it. It was, it's Reagan. They're a great team, and we were fighting from behind. We did come back and win that third set, but I was always focused on winning the next point, winning the next set, and. I feel like we came out and fought, and that's how we came back to beat them. To watch our program grow over these past four years and then come back to challenge a volleyball dynasty like Reagan is so awesome. It's something we've worked for. I have been on the team with these girls for three years now, and just to be able to do that with the seniors this year that I've known for forever, it was really special, and it was something that we really worked towards the entire season. Round three nearly saw the reverse of round two against Austin Lake Travis. Ironically, while Clemens came back from 0-2 to win over Reagan, the Cavaliers to race a two-set deficit of their own at the exact same time to beat two-time defending state semifinalist O'Connor in five. The Buffaloes took the first two sets against Lake Travis, then watched the Cavaliers rally back to force a fifth set. But instead of panicking, the Buffaloes settled down to beat Lake Travis 15-7 in the fifth, the same fifth set score as Reagan, to send the volleyballers to the middle rounds for the first time ever. A sweep over McAllen set up Clemens against Clark in the 6A state quarterfinal at the Alamo Convocation Center. The Cougars were stung the year before by O'Connor and denied their state semifinal chance. Clark came in having won 23 matches in a row. Clemens 35. We knew Clark was a really good team and we knew that they had made a name for themselves over the past couple years and we just looked at each other and said 
it's just volleyball. I think there was definitely some nerves because, like you said, we'd never been there before. And we had some new people on the team that had just started playing and everything. So I think it was us getting in there and we had to sort of catch our bearings. The match started quickly for the team in black as they raced out to a 5-1 lead. It was crazy. They came out, they had their foot on the gas, and we were sort of sitting back taking it all in of how are we going to rebound from this. And I feel like uh, our hitters responded well to the block and our service eve and defense was on that day. So I feel like that's why we were able to perform so well push Clark to their limit and sweep them in three. What could have weighed on Clemens' nerves was nothing more than an opportunity to prove their standing in the area. An 11-point run in the first set blasted the Buffs into the driver's seat the rest of the match, a seat they would never relinquish. Clemens took the opening set in a near landslide 25-16. The second set was much more competitive. The Cougars took a 21-20 lead toward the latter portion of set two. Clemens ended the set winning five of the final six points thanks to two kills by O'Neill, one from Ashley Brew, and one from Buchanan. A 25-22 set win left the Buffaloes one set from an unprecedented trip to Garland and the state semifinals. After we won the second set, I was like, okay, like we have a two lead, like we have to finish it in three. If we go four, we might get down on ourselves a little bit and they give them the momentum. That's not what we wanted to do. I turned and looked at Shelby. She was in middle back and I was in left. And I turned and looked at her and I was just like, one more, bro. Like, we can do this. We got it. Let's go. They expected Clark to do what Lake Travis almost did in round three in erasing a 2-0 lead, knowing that the Buffaloes hit the accelerator in set three. Even when Clark tried to get back in the set, the Buffs didn't leave the door open at all. With a chance to close out the Cougars, the team sang O oh Canada for the knockout blow. Once I set it to Canada and she got that kill off the block, it was I fell to the floor and it was it was insane. I started crying. I got to get the kill on that last ball and that was amazing. And it was a great set from Lily, great defense by Shelby. That whole play was crazy. And then as soon as the ball hit the floor, as soon as I landed from my swing, I collapsed onto the ground and started crying. It was something huge that we had never done before. We really did it. And I ran and I hugged our setter, Cassidy Stedman, and I felt like we had finally reached the goal that we had set as middle schoolers of coming and being the best volleyball players that Clemens has seen. And this group has really been the best volleyball group that Clemens has had. They won at least one set in 44 matches in 2019. They won all 44 of those matches and will carry a streak of 68 in a row into the new decade. A part of Clemens' historic trophy case had been empty for 60 years. Shelby O'Neill and Cassidy Stedman populated the homestead with new residents. The state semifinals are a different animal. Teams you haven't seen but have heard a lot about await. Waiting for them was Trophy Club Byron Nelson, considered by some to be the best team in the nation, who is 46 and 2. Nerves often derail a team before they ever hit the court or field in the state semifinal. We went to the arena that morning and the first thing we walked in was just looking around. It was huge. It was a lot bigger than what we've been used to. We'd never been there. It really helped that we went up there and got to take in the oohs and the ahs of being in the gym at first that morning. And then just being there together in the locker room, we were like, okay, like, it's just another volleyball game. We're all here for the same reason. And actually, Byron Nelson was doing their warm-up right when we got there. So it was sort of a wake-up call we got there and we were like whoa we're doing this we're actually here like this is our chance i think there was more pressure on nelson than us because we have we've always had that underdog mentality throughout the season and if they had lost to us like i think they were scared maybe a little bit and just put felt pressure on them because they didn't want that to happen head coach robin wonderlick did her best to keep her team's nerves contained whatever she did 
worked. It was Clemens who got off to the early start. They controlled the tempo of set one and led by as many as four. The Bobcats struggled to get into a groove as the Buffs stayed ahead for most of that opening set. Byron Nelson didn't take its first lead of the set until 20 to 19. We came out really strong in the first set and when they kind of saw that they were like oh like this isn't going to be easy for us like we actually have to work for this and so when we came out strong, like we pushed them and pushed them to their limits and then they realized, okay, like we actually have to start playing now. Then things got interesting. The set moved back and forth as neither team led by more than one. Nelson had multiple set point chances to close out set one, but the buff saved set point after set point after set point. Unfortunately, Clemens couldn't get a set point themselves. Finally, on the seventh chance, Nelson took advantage of an attack error by Clemens to win the opening set 32-30. Once we got into the 20-point mark, I was really sitting back like, oh my god, we're about to take a set off of Byron Nelson. They're full of great athletes, and it was crazy going in and taking the lead in that first set and then being able to push them to the limit of 32-30. and. I mean, I feel like we gave them a good challenge. They also made a little bit of history. It was the first time in the 54-year history of the tournament that somebody scored 30 points in a set in a semifinal or final and didn't win it. It was heartbreaking as soon as that last ball dropped, but it's something we fought for. It's something we wanted, and I felt really good about knowing that we could push them to that point, about knowing that we were right there with him. That was where we were supposed to be. If there was a hangover from set one, Byron Nelson took advantage of it in set two, leading the entire opening half by as many as four points. But the Buffaloes fought hard in the second half of set two. A 10-4 run highlighted by three Nelson errors, two aces by Giselle Santini, and multiple kills by Brew and O'Neal gave Clemens a 21-19 lead and forced Nelson to call a timeout. That timeout refueled Nelson, and they scored six of the final seven points to take set two, 25-22. We just couldn't find an answer on the block, so we were moving people around, moving defenses around. Um, took us a little bit to find a groove, but we were fighting with them, and I feel like had we focused on maybe not making as many errors, and being more aggressive in what we were doing, we would have had a better result in the second set. Clemens was just a few points away from being up 2-0, but instead they were down 0-2 and fighting to hang in the match. They scored the first six points of the set, then ran off another 6-0 run mid-set to lead by as many as 13, and Clemens' dreams of pulling off another upset were dashed. Four attackers by Nelson gave Clemens extra points, but they were unable to catch up in the final set falling 25 14. What had been a valiant run overcoming obstacles, nerves, and history had come to an end in the state semis. Really hurt to just know that we could have done it. We were right there. Um, and we sort of let it slip, but it was an amazing experience. It was amazing to be there. No one knew we could go this far. And to be honest, like, I didn't even know we could go this far, but we did, and we proved ourselves to everyone else. So I'm just proud of, like, how far we have came. For me, I just didn't think about my season being over. I definitely thought about the loss and realized that like that was it for us this year, but I didn't re really remember that I was a senior and I don't have a next year. But it was really it was sad, but I I'm so incredibly proud of this team and all my teammates and so thankful to all my coaches. While the 2019 Clemens Buffaloes were not the last team standing in 6A, they outlasted the entire area and turned from being a squad that was unable to make a long playoff run to a team that proved persistence pays off. We had changed this program, and this program was going to change after we left. Brought to you by Stephen John's at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, located on the I-35 South Service Road, just south of 3009. Eat better, feel better. By David Flatman at Cat5 Graphics, your t-shirt shop. Located on FM 1518 in shirts. Call 210-659-9430 for all your custom screen and embroidery printing needs. And by Greg Sherman Videography and Bowtie Productions of Texas. Call 419-902-3353 for all your videography needs in San Antonio and the Texas Hill Country. Even though the Buffaloes will lose a lot of seniors off of this year's program, with 10 coming back next year, the new expectation is no longer getting to the second week of the tournament. It's getting to round number six in the state semifinals in Garland. I'm Greg Sherman.